Welcome, I'm Janelle Kolaski, a career mindset coach and actor. And I'm Amanda Duvall, a self-authenticity and prosperity life coach and actor as well. And we're your co-host of Mindset Artistry YouTube channel, where we teach you the art of discovering and using your mindset to build, build a career and life you desire. Talking about how focusing on your healing is better than trying to focus on someone else. Yes. And hello. Hi, Renee. Oop. Oops. Hi, Renee. Oh my gosh, I was just talking to Lindsay about you and telling her how amazing you are. Renee is an amazing actor. Oh, I did it. a class together. Hi, Alex. You met Alex, right? I did. A manager. Oh, yes. Hi, hello, Alex. Hello. 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 Yes. Yeah, so some weird things can happen. Amanda's better at this, but uh, we're going to talk about really the importance of focusing on your own healing. And maybe you all know this, but maybe you're a little bit of a control freak or you're just trying to get that relationship to work or that career to take off or do whatever. And you keep trying to move all these pieces outside of yourself that you don't have control over like other humans. And then that's where you can run into trouble because instead of expending energy where you should on yourself, you're putting it out there. Um, so before we really kick it off and give you some tools, Amanda, I would love if you could give us an example of where focusing on your own healing finally mm -hmm. is something that you had mm -hmm. resisted, helped you with something in your career or relationship like it was kind of like magic like something mm -hmm. finally worked out when you let go and just focused on you gosh a lot <laughs> the healing journey has been real it has been really real uh a lot of it has to do with self-love and in wondering why I've been attracting people who just want to use me and not in like a like a physical way but more of an energetic way and using me in a way that depletes me and the energy that I put into my career, my self-care, and my intellectual understanding, and all the things that I actually care about and value within my life. And because I want to see people happy, I want to see people thrive, I would be more than happy to help them. And unfortunately, what has happened is I put my boundaries to the back burner. Mm -hmm. I've put my self-care to the back burner. And so when I've recognized that, because I, I want to see people happy, I want to see people thriving, I want to see people doing their best. And I put their needs over mine. And unfortunately, then what happens is that I become depressed, full of anxiety, sadness. I start living in the pain of things, of why people supporting me and all these things. And then I lose myself. And so what I've recognized is put yourself first, be a little selfish. And being selfish is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all, because when you're able to put yourself first, you're also able to have empathy and care for others. And you also teach them how to heal themselves and how to recognize things that they need to overcome within themselves and in their lives. And so when you when I put myself first, I also recognize the love that I wanted. I understood what love meant for myself and, and also for my partner and also my friends and family. I was able to love them unconditionally and authentically as I am and accept myself. And when I did that, I also taught them how to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful, amazing gift. And that is what I learned by doing that. Hi, Hi Derek. Derek. Hi, Derek. Good yes. to see you. So that's what I learned. Yeah, that's, I love that. Yeah. And if you don't know what you need, how can mm -hmm. you expect somebody else to, yeah. right? Like sure. how, how can you expect someone else to give you what you need if like you have no idea, but it's very backwards. We're not taught that as kids. I mean, as a child, you should be dependent on others, but hello, hello, hello. I've met some pretty cool people where their parents were always kind of like, okay, but like talking to them, like little adults, like not in a mean way, but just mm -hmm. kind of like, well, what do you need? What's bothering you or what's going on with you? But not all of us. I mean, I definitely didn't have that. And um, yeah, so what happened to me recently, it was really cool. I had three friends, actually four, where I thought that um, like we, our friendship was done forever. And we had kind of outgrown each other, but also there was some negativity. And I really noticed that um, unhealed parts of myself were attracting things in them that weren't positive. Mm. So the the ways I was being mean to myself and not setting boundaries of how I was talking to myself or what mm. I would set from other people, because I hadn't cleared that yet, they were kind of doing that in a way, mm -hmm. um, maybe just not respecting me as much or putting me last because something I'm always kind of working through is, oh, do I matter? Like, I don't matter. 
or I have to do everything in a relationship for it to work. It can't be 50-50. And you learn these things based on your programming growing up usually. And a lot of that comes from my childhood because my parents were really amazing, still are. Uh, but I have a brother with special needs that took up a lot of time. Hello, hello, hello. Ah, and that's okay that he did, but uh, I was a little kid and I didn't understand, you know, I'm not an adult. I don't know what's going on. And so it just seemed like when I had a need and I would ask for it, it was always too much because there was stress in the household. And I had to figure out some things by myself. Um, and I wanted to be a good kid and I, I loved my brother and I wanted to support him and help my family and all these things. And so it's not like they were doing anything bad. Like it's just, <laughs> they were just trying to survive and the way I took it. So we'll, we talk a lot about stories you tell yourself in the past and how that changes and all those things. And so these friends came back into my life after I let go of them completely, forgot about them and what they had done to hurt me or whatever. And I went on my own healing journey. And once I healed the things that allowed that behavior, they called me up like, hey, Janelle, I haven't seen you in so long. Do you want to hang out? Or I'm sorry that I did that. So it's not about really getting closure because sometimes you won't but that was kind of a nice cherry on top I did the work and was finally okay with whatever and when I finally healed that part of myself not only did I I could move forward in life but then this person was finally apologizing for what they did mm -hmm. so that's why it's important to focus on your healing because I tried with them don't treat me like this this is how you have to treat me and no we have to do this and trying to make it work and it just wasn't meant to at that time. Yeah. What I would say is that don't expect an apology. Mm -hmm. I know that's hard to accept. And, and because most people, and I'm very, I was very guilty of that. Not so much anymore, but I was very ego based, very in control. And for me, apologizing felt very weak and vulnerable. And it felt like I was telling someone that I was incapable or that I couldn't handle the situation or that I wasn't strong enough. And so for me, apologizing diminished the way that I saw myself. And so as I went through that journey of recognizing that it's okay to apologize, even if you're in your feelings, if you're, you say something, you don't necessarily mean it, which is why I, I treasure what my brother taught me was, you know, think twice, speak once. And I take that on another level is give yourself 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Or if you're really logical in that sense, tap into the emotional side, because some people are more logical and some people are more emotional and that's okay too, but try the opposite in order to ground yourself and balance yourself out. And so what I mean is by saying, don't accept, don't expect apologies from other people is that sometimes a lot of people are not able to apologize because they don't, they're not aware of what they're doing. Or if they mm -hmm. are, they don't care. Yeah, they, yeah. They don't care. And that's okay. If they don't care, then that's not the people for you. Whether it's your friends, your family, then you teach them by example. You go, okay, you don't care. I don't care either because it's not value. You don't value me, so I don't value you. And that energy that you're giving out, I'm going to reciprocate. And so understanding and be aware of people's actions versus their they're what they tell you. People will show you how they feel about you. People will tell you how they feel about, like pay attention. And it's hard because we see what I, I recognize. Someone said this recently. It's like, what you hope for people is what you hope for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you may recognize somebody's, oh my gosh, you're really talented. And I can see you doing all these things. It's like, but you're also talented and you can do all those things as well. And if you take that energy and put it into yourself and be a little selfish in the sense of nurturing yourself, caring for yourself, healing, recognizing what you need, what you value, what's important to you, and really nurturing your environment, meaning your friends, your family, just because of your family does not mean you have to constantly say yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You can say no and set healthy boundaries between them and let them know because what I've recognized is, and I didn't know I did this until years later, is I helped my mom and my my dad heal through my own recognition and my own journey because I was able to articulate my feelings, my thoughts, my mm -hmm. emotions, and the, the idea and journey of learning because they didn't have access to things that I didn't. And I helped them regulate their emotions yeah. and talk it out because I wasn't really, I was afraid of talking it out full circle. Is it? I was afraid to, to shed my emotions and vulnerability because I felt weak. Yeah. Because it was life. 
and yeah. get over it. Get over it. I had that a lot. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just the way people, I mean, I think that's the thing, like these people that apologize to me, um, they were very apologetic because they're like, I'm sorry. Like that was so terrible. And I was like, yeah, I mean, you were really in, they were really going through a lot or they had been hurt a lot. And this is my true opinion. I don't think there are technically bad people out there. I think people are born into this life and a bunch of stuff happens to them. And they're just that it's like, if they don't get out of that hole, they're just recreating that pain for other people because they're so full of pain and they're not healing it because I mean, I've had a pretty great life and still some things had some great impact on me. And I definitely hurt people. I didn't know, like you were saying, I was unaware that I had to heal certain things. And so if someone is hurting you and I don't forget that saying, but whatever, it's like, if they're meant to be in your life, essentially they will Mm -hmm. eventually. And it was kind of cool because I always have this desire to control things. I'm like, oh, but I really put time into this relationship or this career and I really want it to work out. But there's reasons that it doesn't at the time that it doesn't and maybe never will. And just really, I encourage everybody as we're going to wrap up here you know, just try to keep focusing on yourself. You've had the conversations with the person, you've asked them to not do this or that, and they don't want to, like they have to want to. And you talk about that all the time. Like the person has to want to change. And so um, I just happen to let go of these people because even though I think about them from time to time, Mm -hmm. luckily I don't know, we don't live close to each other or whatever. And so it kind of like forced me to let go. And then that was really nice because then I was able to see that, um, you know, things can come back together in a healthy way if yeah. you give it space. Um, so I'd love if you wrapped us up here and any parting thoughts with our audience. Yeah, I would say just lead with kindness with yourself and mm-hmm. understand that the healing journey is going to be a hell of a roller coaster. Yeah. It's going to be a full on circus amusement park. You bought your ticket and you can't give it up <laughs> at this point now. You know, it's 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 unexpected. There's going to be a lot of bumps in the road. There's going to be a lot of um, friction. And we have, I appreciate you both sharing your insights. I saw the title of your live feed and I thought I would check it out. Going through dark family times and get very positive things on the professional side. Yeah, that's that's how it goes sometimes. We We have both extremes and we have to learn how to balance and also understanding that if you experience both extremes, you understand the opposite. So if you experience the darkness, you also when you're in that maybe not so much because we're so stuck in the darkness of it but when you recognize and get yourself out of that darkness or at least see a sliver of light you know that there's a light on the other top other, other side there is this extreme happiness and abundance and healing and growth and love and success and you have to recognize that and it just came to me recently because i was going through, reviewing the year is that all these things these were sessions of your life these were experiences of your life these were things to prepare you for the abundance that you want and desire Mm -hmm. and you cannot have that without the experience because imagine if you didn't know what it feels like to have the lack of then you wouldn't know what it feels like to have the abundance of it yeah and so this darkness and, and light, and also there's a balance. You need the darkness with the light. All the shadows of ourselves, all the, the darkness that we kind of feel shame of and guilt of, You, if you don't accept that, then you can't love yourself unconditionally. You can't accept yourself wholeheartedly. So you have to recognize that these things exist and don't just dis- deter them. Don't diminish them. Don't just dis- turn away from them and go I don't even want to acknowledge them acknowledge them because the minute you do you also dismantle them and you give them less power over you because you can bring them along the journey and understand that like oh maybe that's a gift within me that I'm meant to share granted all our hiccups and bad crap has happened to us is brought us to this particular moment right now in front of you sharing our story because we went through it Mm -hmm. we experienced it And we came through the other side. There's always an other side of the darkness. And you sometimes have to be the light in the dark. You have to be that little lantern walking in around and going, okay, I think I see it and keep going, keep going. Don't give up and understand this is only temporary. Even the good is temporary. But if you recognize the good, you will always find the good in your life. And, And I'll leave it with that and just, you know, focus on the healing of it. Because when you do, like I said earlier, you're going to teach people how to heal themselves as well through example. And sometimes I know it sucks because I recognize that in myself is that 
You can't bring like a cow to water and you can't force them to drink. You have to be the healing in order to teach them how to do it. And sometimes it sucks that we have to be the teacher. We have to be the tutor. Yeah. It sucks. You got to show people how to treat you. You can't tell them. You got to show people. It's like, and you know, not like this is how you do it. You just live your life and they'll catch up or they won't. And yeah, we got to go, but we love you. <laughs> yes. Thank you Yeah, for joining thanks. us. Yeah. And check out our podcast, Mindset Artistry Podcast on Spotify, as well as the Mindset Artistry YouTube all types of topics on there, fun interviews with all types of people. And we have workshops and other things. So, um, you know, we're here for you or your community. If there's anything you really need help with, please let us know. And we'd love to talk about it. What are your thoughts about this episode? Drop it in the comments and let us know what you want to dive into next. Subscribe, like, share, and click the link below to book a free consultation. And we'll, we'll see, see you, you next time. time.